his masterpiece From the top of my head to the tip of my feet I am his masterpiece I matter to God And he matters to me See the setting sun On a golden beach It's God's handiwork Right there for all to see But as lovely as This beautiful world can be We are the masterpiece Of all created things I am his masterpiece From the top of my head To the tip of my feet I am his masterpiece I matter to God And he matters to me See the setting sun God's handiwork Right there for all to see But as lovely as This beautiful world can be We are the masterpiece Of all created things I am his masterpiece From the top of my head To the tip of my feet I am his masterpiece I matter to God And he matters to me friends, I am 4th and 5th grader pastor, Pastor Chung Yat. Today we're going to read from Matthew 5 verses 1 through 10. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew 5 verses 1 through 10. I will read it and I want you guys to follow along the lines. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for there is a kingdom of heaven. Amen. During this time of Israel, the Jews were held by the power of the Roman Empire. So if you guys know the history of Christianity, they were, Israel was under the huge power, strong power of Roman Empire during Jesus' time. Many of the Jews were living in very, very poor conditions and they were called, they were like name callings, uh, derogatory names they were called and looked down upon by many of the Roman um, people. Jesus then gathered the crowds when he saw the crowds. And what was the message that Jesus prepared for them? What kind of message did he want to tell them? Jesus' messages was this, you are a blessing of God. People were confused because they had never thought of themselves as a blessing. When people thought of blessings, they thought of having power, money, a good family, food, and many of these things. However, they were not given to all these people. They didn't have them. Actually, they always needed them. They never thought and felt that they were blessings and have received blessings from God because they didn't own any of those things. Therefore, they were confused. When Jesus said, you are the blessing, people were so confused. They thought to themselves, how am I the blessing when I don't have all of these things? Jesus wanted to answer their question by changing their perspective. A couple of years ago, there was a popular song called Me, Myself, and I. I'm going to read the lyrics. Their lyrics go like this. Oh, it's just me, myself, and I. Solo ride until I die, because I got me for life. Oh, I don't need a hand to hold, even when the ride is cold. I got the fire in my soul. However, the Beatitudes, the Servant on the Mountain, which means the supreme heavenly blessedness, is not about me, myself, and I. Even the world is telling me that everything's about me, myself, and I. What Jesus is teaching through the Sermon on the Mountain, the Beatitudes, is not about ourselves. It is about the heart towards other people. So what is poor in spirit? Blessed are the poor in spirit. With that in mind, let's read verse 3 together. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is a kingdom of heaven. Jesus lays out the first blessedness. You are blessed when you are poor in spirit. Poor, which is in Greek, is pachosis, which means crouching, cowering down, or hiding oneself in fear which is very different, right? Like poor in spirit with like this posture of crouching or cowering down or hiding uh, oneself in fear. And it comes from the situation of bankruptcy. Bankruptcy describes a situation when you cannot pay back the debt. When the banks are calling you, hey, you owed us $100,000, please pay us back by tomorrow. The posture and the emotion you have is crouching, cowering down, and hiding yourself in fear because you don't have anything to pay back. You have zero dollars to pay back, but they're calling you to pay you back or pay them back. What does that have to do with God's kingdom and to be a blessing? Jesus says that the blessed are the ones who are poor in spirit with the posture of crouching, cowering down, and who know that they are spiritually bankrupt. Poor in spirit means to know that you have nothing to offer to God. And God calls, uh, calls those people, you are the blessing. Someone who is not self-righteous, someone who doesn't say or think that I am right. I can do all these things by myself. God doesn't call them the blessing. God calls the people who say, I am not right and I can't do all these things on my own. He wants you to have a heart 
that is like helpless as a beggar. Jesus mentions it first because it is the start of the blessing. This is the first thing that Jesus mentioned to the crowd. Blessed are the poor in spirit. When you recognize and realize that you have nothing, nothing to trust, nothing to gain, to rely upon, either on yourself or other things, when you have nothing, then that means you are blessed by God. Just because you have money, cars, house, and power, clothes, food, and whatever that's good in your eyes, God doesn't want us to rely on those things, but God wants us to be in this spiritual bankruptcy as if we have nothing but to only to rely on God. And those who have the poor spirit will inherit the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus promised. Even if you feel poor in spirit, don't worry because God is going to give you the kingdom of God. What does living as poor in spirit look like in our lives? I'm gonna read you this one story of doggy poo. I'm gonna tell you guys a story and this will kind of give you an idea of how we can live a poor in spirit life. Once upon a time, a little doggy pooed or a little doggy pooed on the side of the road. And there you go, the doggy poo was born. He felt all alone in this world. He believed that nobody needed him for anything and that he had no purpose in life. If only doggy poo had a reason to, to for a being, he wouldn't give up on his dream to be useful to the world. The animals and plants were all said to doggy poo, you are useless, you are nothing. However, one day, Doggy Pooh met a kind dandelion sprout that says that he is valuable. Hey, Doggy Pooh, you are so valuable. You can be useful. The dandelion sprout said, I need you to survive as a fertilizer. Doggy Pooh realized that he can help the little dandelion sprout. Doggy Pooh then hugged the sprout and became a fertilizer for her. Because of Doggy Pooh, this little dandelion sprout became a beautiful flower. Having a poor in spirit is not simply sacrificing yourself, giving everything that you have for other people, or thinking that you are nothing. That's not what it means of having a poor in spirit. It is about having a broken and humble heart before Jesus. It means you always have to know that you cannot save yourself and wash away your sins with your own. Even when we make mistakes or sin against God, nothing, we can do nothing to wash away our sins. Secondly, we have to know that the poor in spirit people know and recognize that Jesus is the only one who can save us and who had saved us from our eternal death and punishment. That only Jesus could wash away our sin. Only he can wash away our sin. So what does that look like, that having a poor in spirit every single day, even though Jesus already washed away our sin, that he gave eternal life, having a poor spirit, the broken heart, means to you come to Jesus with the heart of repentance every single day. And I want you guys to look at Jesus. The story of doggy poo, reminds us of the life of Jesus. Obviously, Jesus didn't think that he was useless and nothing, obviously. However, Jesus, he modeled and he showed us that he has to constantly look to God, the Father, and relied on him. And in the end, he gave himself up for the world to save us from eternal punishment, that you are willing to give yourself up for others. I want all of us to remember that the Beatitudes, it has multiple parts of it and we only read the first part, blessed are the poor in spirit, which is really hard to understand at times. But the theme of blessed are the poor in spirit means somebody, a person who does not rely on themselves. No, me, myself, and I. But rather, we have God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit inside of us.
So boys and girls, I want you guys to practice this poor in spirit. Learn to not rely on yourself, but rely on Jesus every single day and go to Him with the heart and the prayer of repentance. Even though you do a small little things, if, and if that bothers you, I want you guys to go to Jesus because He's the one who can wash away our sins, who can forgive us every single day. So boys and girls, let's all have the heart, the spirit that is poor in spirit. And I want you guys to know and remind you guys all the time that Jesus already portrayed us and he became the model, role model for us to, to look at. Let's all close our eyes, fold our hands, and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this time and thank you for allowing us to learn the Beatitudes. Father, even though we only went over this one topic of the blessed are the poor in the spirit or in spirit, Father, we're learning again and again that we can rely on ourselves. We cannot. We have only you whom we can trust, whom we can rely on. Father, help us. Even when the world is telling us that everything is about me, myself, and I, tell us through your Bible, through your word, that we have God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Father, through the story of Doggy Poo, I know it's, it's not... Um, it's just a fun story to, to hear. But Lord, that story reminds us of who you are or who, what you did for us. Father, even though the world said that Jesus was nothing, you did such a great, such an amazing thing, which was to save us from our eternal punishment and death. Father, through your sacrifice, we're now here to call you our Father and to be saved, to learn about all these great teachings that you are teaching us, Lord. Thank you for loving us, and we pray everything in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.